Okay, so here we have a position time graph with three different types of motion represented. And if you were asked to describe the motion in words, some things you need to look for are what kind of slopes do we see here in the three different sections. And so the first section is clearly a positive slope. The center section is clearly a zero slope. And the last section then is clearly a negative slope. So when we begin to describe the motion, uh, that's one thing we need to keep in mind. Another thing is the starting position, where the object is at time zero, which we see is at zero position at time zero seconds. So, if we want to write some things down here about the motion, we might say that it starts at zero position. It travels with a constant, we'll say, velocity and we're going to say constant because we see that this slope here is a constant value and we know that the slope of a position time graph is what we call velocity. So we'll say constant velocity in the positive direction. Now we'll say positive direction because we know, as I said earlier, that this section of the graph is a positive slope. So the rise of the graph is in the positive direction as the run goes across the graph. Now, if we look at the center section, we have a different kind of motion taking place here. And so here we have no slope. There's zero slope. And if we look over, we see that the object is at a position of 15 meters at a time of 2 seconds. And that continues until a time of 3 seconds. So a stationary object at a position of 15 meters is what we see here. So in our statement we might say then that at two seconds the object stops for one second. Now we see there's a third kind of motion here, and we see that this is a negative slope. So the negative slope then indicates that this object is traveling in the negative direction because it started with a position of positive 15 meters and it ended two seconds later with a position of 5 meters. So the position actually decreased in value and so that negative slope tells us that it's traveling in the negative direction. So we'll say that the object then travels with a constant now we'll say constant again because the slope does not change value it is a constant value of slope so we'll say that it is a constant velocity in the negative direction
And that might be the conclusion of our statement then. That tells us everything we need to know about the object. So again, starting at the zero position, traveling with a constant velocity in the positive direction, the object then stops for a period of one second, and then the object travels with a constant velocity now in the negative direction. So those are the three phases of motion we see. Now next we'd like to find out exactly how fast is this object traveling. So we're going to need to look at the slope here and figure out what the value is of this slope. So we'll again look at the rise and the run of this segment of the graph. And we see that the rise here, again starting from a zero position, it goes out to 15 meters. So we have a rise then of 15 meters on our graph. So we'd say 15 meters of rise. And if we look at the run then of the graph, we see that that 15 meters of position change is happening over a two second time interval. And so if we have a 15 meter rise over a two second run, we have a velocity then of 7.5 meters for every second. Now in the center section where we see that the slope is zero, we know then that at that section the velocity is simply zero because there is no rise over the run of one second. And then we look at the last section and we see that it is a negative slope. And so the position started at 15 and was reduced was reduced to 5. So if it started at 15 and reduced to 5 meters, that is a reduction of 10 meters. So we will use a minus sign to indicate that the position actually decreased and that's why we'll use the minus sign to indicate that. So we have a 10 meter then rise and if we look at the run that 10 meters of position change in the negative direction happened again over a two second run. And so then we again will find the slope as a 10 meter rise, a negative 10 meter rise rather, over a two second run. And we have now a negative five meters for every second. So again, telling us that the position changed by decreasing in the negative direction five meters for every one second over, and then another five meters for another one second over. So now we have clearly our velocity in the first segment, our velocity in the third, second segment, and our velocity in the third segment. Now that we see our velocities, I'd like to see possibly what a motion map might look like for this kind of motion. So first, with any motion map, we indicate where the zero position is and where the positive direction is. And so because when we look at this graph, we see that the start position is at zero, at time zero. So on our motion map then, we will indicate that the object is starting at the zero position and it has a velocity of 7.5 meters per second in the positive direction. So we'll indicate that with an arrow of that length. And that happens for a couple of seconds. Now at this moment then, in our motion, after a couple of seconds have passed, we now have a zero velocity. So no motion is happen happening here. The position is not changing for a period of one second. So in a motion map, we indicate that by simply having a dot and no arrow, because the arrow indicates velocity. 
So a dot now indicates there is no velocity during the third second. And then we take a look at the third segment of the graph, and we see that there is now a negative slope, meaning a negative velocity. So a velocity that's not in the positive direction anymore, it's now in the negative direction. So we would indicate that by drawing arrows to the left. But how long should our arrows be? Well, our velocity in the first segment was 7.5 meters per second, and our arrows are this length. Now our velocity has a smaller value, only 5 meters per second, in the negative direction. So these arrows then should be slightly shorter than our initial arrows because our value is less in the third segment than it was in the first. So then, right below our dot showing we are at rest, I will draw then a slightly shorter arrow and then another slightly shorter arrow. Now you might notice here that in the motion map my last arrow doesn't quite make it back to the zero position. Now is that accurate based on our graph? And so we look over and we see that the object, the last we see of it here in the graph, is at what position? We look over and we see position of five meters at a time of five seconds. So the object never returned to the zero position by the end of the graph. And so as our motion map indicates, our object has stopped short of the zero position just as we see in our graph. So this seems to match up quite well with what the graph shows. Okay, now that we have our statement made, we have our velocities calculated, and we have our motion map drawn, I'd like to take a look at a velocity time graph and see what exactly that might look like uh, based on our position time graph that we see here. So here you see we have a velocity time graph and uh, we need to see what that might look like based on the position time graph we've been working with. So you'll see we still have our velocities here for the first segment, for the second segment, and then for the last segment. So if we see that the first segment is 7.5 meters for every second, and that happened over a two second interval, then what we can do is look at our velocity time graph and see that at time zero, which is when this started to move, at time zero it had a velocity of seven and a half meters for every second. And it did that for a period of two seconds. So then we can come over here and draw a line at the seven and a half a little high probably. So I'll just make a mess of it there. So that then tells us that for the first two seconds in time the velocity was constant at seven and a half meters for every second and it did that for two full seconds. Now that takes care of the first segment. Second segment we see that the object is not moving. It has zero slope during the third second. And so where is zero velocity on the velocity time graph? We see that it's here. This entire t-axis now is zero for velocity. And between two and three seconds is when we see we are at zero velocity. So we go to the zero and we draw our line there indicating again that we have zero velocity for a period of one second. Now again we look at the last segment here and we see we already have a velocity of a negative five meters for every second. A minus five change for every second in time. So we look at our velocity time graph and we see where is the minus five meters for every second and it is down here. And that happened during seconds three through five. So 
we can go to our velocity time graph and we can go to the negative 5 value at time 3 seconds and that happened for the remainder of the 2 seconds that we have. So then we have clearly indicated that we traveled 7.5 meters for every second for 2 seconds we were at rest for two seconds, or for one second, excuse me, and then we traveled at five meters per second in the negative direction for two seconds. Now, one of the last questions I might ask is how much displacement has this object experienced? So how much displacement has it experienced? And we see then and by looking at the position time graph, it started at a zero position and it ended at a position of five meters. So we would say that the total displacement for this particular object would be five meters because the change that it underwent was from going from zero position to ultimately to the position of five meters. Now we see that that is a positive five meters of change. It went from zero to five meters and so again it wouldn't just be five meters of displacement we would say that it is a positive five meters of displacement. So there you have it. I hope this helped. We might do with it. So if this is our velocity time graph